Did you know that chocolate cravings could mean that you're deficient in magnesium? It's true. This week, you've probably seen I've been talking about magnesium and I want to dive into it because, you know, a lot of health professionals say that magnesium is the answer to better sleep and that is partly true. Um, you, you know, you are going to sleep better if you have the magnesium that you need, but it's way more complicated than that. Um, our bodies need lots of different other cofactors to absorb that magnesium. You need a healthy gut and things like that. And so that's why it is not the cure-all for sleep that it's said to be, right? Or else everyone would be taking it and people who make magnesium would be billionaires. So let's first talk about what magnesium does really quickly. So it has five main functions. It's a cofactor for over 300 enzymes in the body. It produces and transports energy, which I know is why a lot of people uh, want to sleep better so that they have more energy. It's necessary for protein synthesis. It transmits nerve signals and it relaxes muscles, which is one of the reasons why it helps with sleep. Now, magnesium can be used to treat a lot of different symptoms because it has so many functions in the body. So it can treat things like anxiety and depression, asthma, blood clots, bowel disease, helps with detoxification, can help if you have diabetes, fatigue, heart disease, migraines, nerve problems, um, and insomnia, of course. So yeah, it's, it's studies have shown that it is helpful for so many different symptoms. So let's talk about how it helps us sleep. There are definitely a few different ways. We already, already mentioned that it helps relax muscles. Um, it turns out that serotonin depends on magnesium for production and function. So, um, and then we make melatonin from serotonin. So all of these things are technically then dependent on magnesium. Um, people with low magnesium often experience restless sleep, so they that can cause waking up frequently during the night. Um, magnesium helps us maintain good levels of GABA, which is a neurotransmitter that helps you relax and that also promotes sleep. Uh, magnesium can help with restless leg syndrome, which can definitely keep you awake at night. I experienced that during pregnancy and it was horrible. Um, and it also helps us regulate stress, which is obviously going to help you sleep better too. And it can stabilize your mood and help with anxiety. So there's so many ways that magnesium does help us sleep. Um, but again, it's complicated. So I first learned about magnesium from the Magnesium Miracle that was written by Dr. Carolyn Dean. And this was really cool when I was working at health food stores in the supplement department so that I could learn, you know, when people were looking for supplements that I could tell them which forms were absorbed better and, and which ones, in my opinion, I thought were best. Because um, it turns out that it's estimated that 75% of Americans don't get enough magnesium. It's really hard to determine the percentage who are deficient in magnesium. Um, Dr. Dean would estimate 90%, but it's very hard to measure magnesium, as I'll tell you about in a minute. Um, but, you know, just know for now that most of us are probably lacking in this essential mineral. And the reasons why we are is, has a lot to do with our soils and the food we're eating. So our soils these days are deficient in magnesium, especially conventionally grown uh, fruits and vegetables. Um, and so then those foods that we're eating lack magnesium. So we're not getting as much magnesium in our diet as we used to. Um, processed foods and junk foods and things like that don't have any magnesium at all. Uh, another reason is that the fluoride in tap water actually binds to magnesium, making us unable to absorb it. You also need stomach acid to absorb magnesium. So if you are don't have enough stomach acid, you're not going to absorb it very well. Um, oxalic acid that's in leafy greens and phytic acid in grain and seeds inhibit absorption. So this is why, you know, a lot of leafy greens should be cooked 
and grains and nuts and seeds are ideally soaked to um, reduce that phytic acid so that you can then absorb the minerals in the food. Uh, drugs like birth control pills, some antibiotics, and corticosteroids create magnesium deficiencies. And you also need calcium to absorb it, but not too much. Um, calcium supplementation can be very dangerous, which I will talk about at a later date. Um, you need vitamin D, you need B vitamins, you need selenium and boron also to absorb magnesium. Now the best dietary sources are gonna be green vegetables, nuts, seeds, legumes, and unprocessed grains. Again, preparing these correctly is really key though to getting the magnesium you need. You also need a healthy gut to absorb it. So if you have um, leaky gut, which many of my clients do, um, where the gut wall has been compromised and there's constantly inflammation, you're not absorbing all your nutrients from food. And so that is going to keep you from absorbing magnesium. So you can supplement, of course, with magnesium. Um, you know, pills aren't as well absorbed by your body, but the forms that are best absorbed are gonna be glycinate, bisglycinate, and malate. So I have a couple recommendations for supplements that I can um, put in the chat, but Jigsaw SRT magnesium is, is a slow release kind of magnesium, so that's really nice one to take if you do wanna take a pill. Um, designs for Health Magnesium Malate or Designs for Health Magnesium Glycinate Chelate are a couple other ones that I recommend as well. Now as for dose, um, around the recommended dose is five times your body weight in milligrams. Um, obviously, I cannot tell you how much exactly you need to be taking. Um, what I do recommend is starting with one pill and, in, and gradually adding um, until you get up to this optimal dose or until you get loose stools. When you get loose, loose stools, and that means that you're taking too much, your body isn't absorbing it. So you can gradually um, increase how much you're taking to kind of get to your ideal dose. Now, I actually recommend taking magnesium topically instead of orally. It's much better absorbed by your body. Um, it doesn't actually have to go through the, the digestive tract, um, which, so if you have an unhealthy gut, um, this is a really nice way to bypass that. And, um, and you can take a lot more without getting those loose stools as well. So there are magnesium oils or sprays that are available on the market. Sometimes these can um, be pretty concentrated and kind of cause stinging or tingling. And that might mean that you need to uh, dilute it a little more so your skin isn't so sensitive to it. Um, another great way to get magnesium is to take a bath in Epsom salts or with magnesium flakes. And I can put links to these products as well that I recommend. Um, but yeah, taking a bath every night um, with these salts, or if you don't want to take a bath every night, then taking a foot bath where you just soak your feet is really effective as well. So about 20 or 30 minutes is the ideal there to soak with just half a cup of either Epsom salts or magnesium flakes. So should you take magnesium for sleep? Again, is it depends. It's probably not going to be the, you know, the only answer to your sleep, especially if you've been struggling to sleep for a long time. I know when I was struggling, I tried every pill under the sun because I knew about many of them and there wasn't one magic answer. I had to do um, other things as well besides just taking this pill. So um, of course, you know, Luckily, magnesium isn't toxic unless you take it in super large amounts, but I don't recommend that. Um, I mean, mainly the side effect of taking too much is loose stools. Although that isn't fun, it's not terribly harmful unless you're doing it every day. Um, so taking magnesium isn't necessarily going to hurt you, but you know, there's no guarantee that you're going to absorb it if you start taking a supplement. 
And honestly, the best way I think to know if you need to take magnesium is to do a hair tissue mineral analysis test. It's the most accurate way that shows um, your magnesium need. Blood tests aren't reliable. Only about 1% of magnesium is in your blood. So that's not going to give you an answer as to whether you need magnesium or not. Um, this hair tissue mineral analysis will kind of show you your mineral status over the past few months. So instead of it being this very quick snapshot, like a blood or a urine test is of things, um, the hair tissue, again, shows how things have been for the past few months. Um, so, and this will also show you your calcium levels, your boron levels, your selenium levels, all of these cofactors that you need to absorb it. Like for me, I did this test and I showed that I had zero boron. So, that means that my body is having a hard time absorbing, absorbing magnesium because it needs boron to do so. So finding that out and now I know to take boron and magnesium together is really going to help make sure that I absorb that magnesium. So, you know, the way I see it, the only way to ensure you aren't wasting money on magnesium supplements is to do this HTMA test. And luckily my Boss Sleep Solution program that includes this lab test also includes the hair tissue mineral analysis. And that's really cool because it, it gives us um, an in-depth view of what's going on with your mineral status. And then I know what to recommend to balance things back out. So if you've tried all the supplements and you've, you're doing all the things and you still aren't sleeping, then that means that something is going on in your body that's keeping you from sleeping. And magnesium is could definitely be part of the answer, but there's only one way to find out, and that is to do the test. So I hope this helps. Definitely let me know if you have any questions about magnesium, about supplements, or about these tests that I include in my Boss Sleep Solution program. Thanks for listening.